I'm JD the Media Jack and welcome to another episode of The Flip Side. On this episode, we're going to be talking with some content creators who are finding new life on different platforms. Just a reminder that The Flip Side is available audio podcast on multiple platforms, be it Google Podcast as well as the Apple Podcast, formerly known as iTunes, or Spotify, Anchor, and many others. All you have to do is search for The Media Jack and download any episode available of the flip side onto your mobile device or your favorite listening device. Doesn't matter. But chances are, if you enjoy podcasts, the Media Jack and the flip side is there. Just search for the Media Jack. First off, a good friend of mine. I am honored to call him a friend as well as a confidant. And he's a creative, very talented person when it comes to anything he darn well touches, be it custom painted records on Etsy, cosplay or most recently a tiktok creator and podcast producer we're talking with ben gibson right now on the flip side your material on tiktok is not only original but also you put your own spin on a lot of things and kudos to you and rightfully so you're growing in numbers and followers you're currently sitting at 84.6 thousand followers on tiktok congratulations ben Thank you. Appreciate that. And it's it's hard to believe because that number grows daily and it, it blows my mind every day. Really, mm-hmm. The bigger number right next to your profile, and I'm looking at it right now, is you have over a million four in likes. And yes. that is staggering. Like, I, I couldn't even imagine a million four people paying attention to me, let alone the fact that a million four people have taken upon themselves to go, I like you. <laughs> I think a million four people just feel sorry. For me, it's, like, it's like the parents paying off that kid in elementary school to go be friends with my son. I think that's kind of what's going on. People are just like feeling bad. Be like, ah, I got to give this poor kid some love because he's clearly not getting it in his day to day life. He lives up in the north somewhere in Canada. Just give him a little bit of attention. Yeah, he he literally walks in snow up hills both way to work every day. I'm sure. <laughs> Two huskies. Come on. Yes. So uh, for those unaware and uninformed, uh, Ben and I are actually, we live in the same town. We are good friends. We've worked together on a we few. Are? We Aren't we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you live and you know where I live and we brought beer to each other. So I consider that being good friend qualifiers. That would definitely be a qualification. Yes, I would agree. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I was uh, lucky enough to be a part of your podcast, which is Insert Creative Title. Yeah, that was a good episode. Thanks for being on there, by the way. My pleasure. It was. It was. Go ahead. And thank you for having me on yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pleasure. This will be the third time you've been on my podcast. Is it really? Yes, it is. Oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs> Shows how much I pay attention. Wow. Well, that's just how much I adore you. I mean, I I adore me lots, but I don't even yeah. adore me that much. So since the last time that we have, I'm just blowing right past that. Since the last time <laughs> we've had a conversation on a podcast format on my show, we've gone from a uh, world ca- world class cosplayer all the way up to now someone who does these incredible pieces of art on Etsy, as well as a phenomenal talent on TikTok who mingles and rubs elbows with some of the elite. How did we get here? Man, I think it's because I have ADHD. I think that's why. <laughs> I, like, honestly, I, I, I seriously think I, I'm undiagnosed. Uh, I, I love jumping from one, one medium to the next. Uh, cosplay, it was foam at first, and then I loved working with the Warbler. And then from there, I wanted to touch in with things like uh, Pepicura and chain mail. It just, I couldn't, I'm never satisfied with what I'm working on. I'm always looking for the next thing okay and the, the cool thing with tiktok right now is i've been able to uh, actually start doing art which was complete accident I, I was doing i was selling some stickers to say you know thank you for some people and stuff like that uh who follow me and they're about stickers and i'm like i'm gonna do a little doodle and a thank you letter in there and then people wanted to buy my art so i started selling art so tiktok kind of generated that but being able to have this like ADHD sort of attitude or whatever it is inside me that can't pay attention to one thing at a time, <laughs> uh, having a TikTok where it's like, oh, I'm going to make a 15 second video and then I jump to the next trend or thing that pops into my mind or something that makes me laugh and then being able to back off and do the art again and then back to some random thought that I'm going to make some funny video out of. It's something that's actually feeding into itself even if I lose that train of thought and lose interest. So. Mm. 
What was it like when you started to notice the attention and attraction you were getting through your TikTok account? Oh, man, it was weird. It still is very weird. Uh, if you go back into my earlier account, I, there's a video. Uh, it was last fall, just before the snow flew. I think it was... Uh, I think it was in November. I had 400 followers, and I was at the dog park, and I was like, my mind was blown with 400 followers. Mm -hmm. I'm like, thank you guys. Like, this is crazy. I appreciate it. And then it was shortly after that, uh, it started uh, gaining a lot more traction a lot faster. And now, I mean, there's a lot of people who gain more traction than me a lot faster, but even still, the followers I get, I get minimum 200 followers a day. Really? Which is insane. Yeah, minimum. That's minimum. That's an that's average day. I don't like for the last three days I was just out fishing in the bush. I had not touched my phone, no internet connection, nothing. And I came back and I had over 700 more followers because that's just the average I get now. So is it the magic of the for you page or is it the fact that you are uh, grasping on to trends and making it your own? It's a little bit of all of it. Uh, if you, if you go to TikTok and you post one video and you're not going to, your, the for you page isn't going to do anything, mm. but if you go to TikTok and you make five videos a day and you end up with like three, four hundred videos, you might have a dozen of those videos that are going to be getting traction on the for you page even several months later, and that's what I have now. Like I can I can see what videos are getting traction and I can see where it's coming from, and a lot of them are old videos, because I put out so much content out there, it's it's kind of a a game of quality versus quantity. Eventually, if you put out enough quality, you're going to run into the quality that people will like. And if you can stick to that quality, that is your, your niche, and then continue putting out the quality or the quantity within that quality mm. is kind of the, the balance, but it's really hard balance to, to maintain. Mm. When, it, when I, when I think of social media and quality versus quantity, I think of the difference between uh, Twitter and Instagram. Twitter, you could just hammer it out, hammer it out, hammer it out, and you can just go on this entire rant of whatever, be it opinions or, or likes mm -hmm. or conversation or whatever, and then through that, you will start to get traction, whereas Instagram, it is definitely a quality uh, situation where a great photo, a funny post, a video, a meme, and you make it your own, but spread out over time, that is how you basically get some attention. And then you have TikTok here where it has as you said, quality over quantity, but then you are sometimes faced with, and I know other TikTokers have brought this up, the spam likes where people think, oh, I'm helping this person out by going like, 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 but you're not actually watching the video. TikTok has this, has this interesting format and measurement where it's not whether or not you like videos, which is helpful, but it's the amount of time that's watched. Have you ever come across an issue like this? Um, no, and I honestly, I, I dislike any time someone is uh, talking, and, and they, I understand their thought process when they, they don't like that someone like, 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 just spam likes their videos. Uh, I get their thought process on it, but at the same time, that person just went through and say just liked 20 of your videos trying to help you out, and they watched like a second of each one. Right. A second on that video and a like on that video is better than nothing. So that person, if they actually watch your videos through and through, they may have only watched three, maybe four, but I mean, that's good, mm. but there's some videos that they wouldn't have touched as well. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's better to watch it through and through. That's hundred percent right. It's better for the algorithm, but I mean, any like, any view, no matter what time on any video is better than nothing. When you're making your content and I know I'm like, I'm starting to learn the process behind TikTok, And I know that you, you most likely have noticed that I have a TikTok account. Oh yeah. And I haven't posted a damn thing. <laughs> I've, been waiting. I've been waiting. I, yeah, I'm contemplating it, but I've been going through and I'm experimenting. And there's a couple of things that are actually in my um, draft folder, but how do you go through your process? Because there's lots of trends out there and there's some that you, you clearly go in a specific direction, creativity wise um for me yeah I, I try to do something relatable if someone can relate to it on a day-to-day -day basis or someone with a similar personality to me can relate to it mm. uh that's what i try and target someone who can relate to it mm. uh, so i'll be searching through the for you pages for you page is good for so much it's not even just good for finding for me it's audio uh, but also for getting your creative juices flowing so i will scroll through the for you page until i find i like to look first for music rather than just uh, people talking. So I'll try and find a song 
that someone else has taken and done something creative with. Mm. And then I'll say, okay, this works really good. Uh, it's gotten lots of likes, it's gotten lots of comments. I'll go to the, the sound itself. A lot of people have used it. And if the earlier you are on that sound, the better, of course. Mm. Uh, but I'll say, okay, this is obviously a good sound. People like this sound. And I'll take it and I'll try and apply it to myself and what I think people can relate to in the day-to-day -day life or relate to who are similar to me. Because mm. I'm not going to lie, I drink a lot of beer. So there's a lot of content out there that I'm talking and joking about being an alcoholic because people joke about that sort of stuff. It's the nine to five, get home from work, crack a beer, yay. That's kind of the stuff I do. So I'll look for a music or look for a song and I'll try and turn that into a day-to-day -day thing about just drinking beer or mm. mowing the lawn or petting the dog or getting in shit from the wife, <laughs> that sort of stuff. Or making the wife happy by just strutting around and actually vacuuming and cleaning. Yes, yes. I've seen that video, which <laughs> cleverly done. But Thank also, you. you you are not shy about creating your own content. You 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 do a setup, a punchline. You express your own opinions. You do this whole uh, breaking through the bathroom door situation, and you know I can appreciate the fact that you don't rely on other content. You don't rely on other trends. You try to get out there and you be original. You let your own sense of humor shine through. Yes. Well, I th if you're just going to, and there's nothing wrong with it. A lot of people do it, but if you're just going to rely on trends, I mean, you're, you're not going to really connect to your audience. Your audience is going to connect to you. You're not going to know who each other are or anything. Mm. So like I said, I try and make it relatable to me. So I try and take something and put it on my own spin. And that's how you kind of become original anyways. That's how people can really, find you you're going to do the same trend as 100 million other people out there you're just going to be another fish in the sea but if you put any sort of spin on it at all that's kind of how you stand out you might not get the same views but you're going to get more um i don't want to say organic but you're going to get a lot more uh people connecting with you there are a lot more valuable views genuine genuine that's the word thank you <laughs> I don't know why I can't think of that word. It's okay. No, no, we all we all have the, that one moment of like it was there. It's right here. Oh, I, I know have, it is. I have more than one moment of that on a day to day basis. <laughs> I'm really bad for like forgetting my vocabulary. It just goes out the window on one sentence later. I'm just like, wait, what? What's that word? Oh yeah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell of? I forgot. Exactly. Yeah. No, I get that. And just like that, I completely blanked on my next question. See. <laughs> <laughs> I, relatable content, yes. make a TikTok. Go. Yes. You threw down a gauntlet for a up and coming TikToker who has since blown up and it had to do with your beard and her hair. How for did this record, come to be? For the record, I knew she was going to blow up since the moment I freaking saw her on TikTok. Man. Okay. It's, I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but there's people I look at. And I'm sure, I'm sure that I'm not always on target. There's people I miss and that sort of thing. But I can look at someone and I'm like, they're going to do extremely well. And I, I, it's a little selfish of me, a little bit of snake in the grass. I'm not going to lie. But I try and make connections with those people early because it's a good connection to have. Uh, so, like, call me Chris. I, I really did. I wanted to get in there early because I knew she was going to blow up. It, mm. was, it was completely obvious. But at the time when we made this bet between her hair and my beard, I only bet my beard because I knew I was going to win. <laughs> there, was, there was no way this beard was going anywhere. Um, but yeah, she was just like, yeah, there's no way I'm going to hit a million followers like in six months. And that's what I told her. Like, I, I followed her at, I think, 15,000 followers, something mm. like that. And I, I was at like 60 at the time. Mm. And I'm like, no, like you're, you're going to go far, kid. Like seriously. And she was at 30, 30,000 when I started talking to her. And then when we made the bet, I think she was at 300,000. Uh, so she was going to have to dye her hair purple if she did hit a million followers within the six months, and I would shave my beard if she didn't. Right. It's a win-win for her both ways. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, she didn't think she'd do it. Clearly she did. She did it in like a week. She hit a million after after that bet, like right away. So it blew up. Uh, she was going to blow up anyways. It's not like I did it for her. Don't get me wrong there. Mm -hmm. uh, she was going to blow up anyways. I just maybe got her like a day ahead schedule. <laughs> Like if that even. Well, sometimes throwing down the gauntlet is what it what it takes to uh, get something motivated. Like it's eventually it's going to happen, but once you put something in the line, it it makes people pay attention more. Oh yeah. Well, no. Like she was getting like ten to thirty thousand followers a day already. 
And then when she dropped that bet with me, she started getting like 50,000 followers a day. Like it, I made a difference, but I didn't make the difference. No, you know no. What I'm saying? Yeah, no, no. I, I understand 100%. But still, yeah. the point the point is, is that you, you went out there, you recognize the talent and the skill, and you made this incredible connection with Call Me Chris. And you, you, you weren't the cause, but it was definitely an interesting way to help out and just basically throw something out there because those who did pay attention were most likely, this is my opinion, most likely willing to go and think to themselves, I wonder what she looks like with purple hair. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and there's people who did the same. I wonder what he looks like with a beard. And she, she did a duet with me and everything. She got me followers as well. So, I mean, it's not just... I did this for her. Mm -hmm. No, she did more for me than I did for her. Yeah. Easy. Th so that, I thank her for that. that that's actually the one, th one thing I wanted to jump onto next is the fact that uh, as, as toxic as some of the uh, other social media apps may be, and I'm pointing a finger directly at Twitter, it seems as though there's a lot more community and a lot more camaraderie when it comes to TikTok, and duets have a lot to do with it. Yes. Uh, the community in TikTok, A, is amazing, uh, but B, don't be fooled that there is uh, a snake in the grass around every bend mm. on every platform, every walk of life. There, There's that community out there, too, where it's going to be toxic. It's just a matter of staying away from it. Um, I've been lucky enough. I've had very few trolls in my comments. I've had very, very little toxicity in my account, everything, uh, mostly because I try and associate myself with, with people that are really positive. And it's just staying positive with yourself and everyone around you. I think that's kind of the key for, even if you're going to go on Twitter and you want to be right in that toxic feeds, whatever, you can still find the good people. Mm. Speaking of toxicity as well as trolls and good people and whatnot, how much of the pulse are you in contact with when it comes to the political realm and social media right now? Uh, 0.01%. Okay. Well, then let's just skim the surface here. Are you at <laughs> all concerned whatsoever? And, and I know that you and I both live in Canada. Are you at all concerned whatsoever with President of the United States, Donald Trump, and this entire situation dealing with the fact that he's paranoid or possibly even, in my opinion, utterly embarrassed and pissed off at the people behind TikTok? Are you yeah. worried? Uh, up until today, I was 0% worried. Um I don't know how accurate this is. I haven't uh, seen it exactly for myself, but there was a TikTok I watched where someone was explaining that a bill was signed. Uh, I believe it was today or yesterday the bill was signed where TikTok essentially has 45 days to be purchased out by an American company. If it is not within those 45 days, it will in fact, and it's signed that it will in fact be banned in the United States. Mm. It is an executive I, order by the yes. United States. Um, that is accurate. Um, and, uh, as far as I understand what's going on with that situation is, um, Microsoft is at the head of the game for that one, which would yes, be yes. Microsoft's real, uh, real chance into the, the arena known as social media. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I haven't been worried before was cause it's like, obviously an American company is going to buy it out period. Like, cause there's, there's way too much potential in TikTok. Hmm. Uh, it is head over heels taking over the world at this point. So there's millions, billions of dollars to be made within TikTok. So someone's going to want to buy this out with the chance of it going under. Because as soon as the American company or the Americans say no to this company and we're banning it, its stock is going to plummet. It's, it's going to start becoming irrelevant at some point. So someone's going to want to buy it out and keep it going and bring that money in. So now the fact that there's actually something signed and in 45 days it's going to happen, which means there's only 45 days for this to happen now because before it was an open window. It's like it'll someone will buy it eventually. Hmm. Well, now, okay, is a company going to purchase it out or are they going to try and push their own thing to overshadow it? Because hmm. especially like uh, with Instagram, uh, they just came out with the Instagram Reels just recently. Yep. So that might be the competitor and they might push that and just let TikTok fade out. Yeah. Interesting how the timing of that release of the brand new app from Instagram just just – was just almost on point oh, there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about some uh, brighter things. Your uh, record work uh, and the uh, the pieces of art that you have been creating on Etsy is phenomenal. And oh, as for as, for as long as I've known you, you are an incredible builder and a craftsman and so creative. I was not aware of this skill that you have. Neither was I. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
I did a lot of drawing in high school. I did a little bit of painting in high school. And since I graduated, I just kind of, I do doodles on paper once in a while, but I never really sit down and do anything. So yeah, when I started doing doodles in those letters, like I said, for people who are purchasing stickers on my Etsy, mm. it just kind of, I f was like, yeah, I'm loving this. I'm going to just start painting. And apparently I can. <laughs> apparently I can. Hey, look what I can do. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that kind of comes a little bit from uh from my cosplay stuff. I, I did a little bit of painting. There was probably like a month or two where I was like maybe 20, 21, mm -hmm. where I did a little bit of painting, but then, yeah, like it was, it was terrible at the time. So that ended real fast. Mm. But now you, these pieces of art, which dare I ask, where are you getting the records to paint over? Um, most of the records, well, 99% of the records are just scratched to crap. Okay. Like, unplayable okay um and the other one percent is just really bad music that no one wants anyways okay uh, but i'm getting them from like just garage sales that sort of stuff or i put a call out on facebook it's like anyone got garbage records mm. and then someone was like yeah i got some so i got like a, a big paper box probably like a good 80 records in there and then someone else posted on the swap and shop on facebook there that they were going to go dump a bunch of records in the dump if no one picked them up and there was another 40 in there oh. so i mean that's been that's been lasting me a while already so okay so i i was just i was starting to get a little bit sweaty over the fact that like is he painting over american graffiti or like a rod no. stewart or <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. i mean there are some like there's an elvis album i've got in my garage right now and it hurts me to paint over it but it's it's scratched beyond belief no. well you know what someone out there is going to get themselves uh something quite special if that's the case oh yeah. yeah and i do check every record before painting on it like just the other day i found one of the albums i've been looking at actually to to pop purchase myself mm -hmm. i found rush's moving pictures Ooh. in this stack of garbage uh the the album case is gone but the album itself the disc perfect pristine condition not a single scratch on it Ooh. i was like i'm listening to this now <laughs> <laughs> I actually, up on my wall, I actually uh, here, I have a couple of records that are just absolute trash. And it's uh, stuff that I, I would donate to you, but at the same time, it's like, n n no. Um, because I have some stuff that e I haven't even heard of and different colors and stuff. So I do appreciate the fact that you, you just make sure that you're not painting over something quality. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> and if I am... I'm going to put a scratch in it myself just to make sure someone doesn't realize it. I'll be like, oh, did, oh, oh that, what happened? Oh, that's, that's Pink Floyd's The Wall. Um, it's perfect condition. Oh, oh, nice scratch. Oh, it was like that to begin with. Whoops. No. Oh. No, I, I check everyone beforehand. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so what is next for the official Ben Gibson? Uh, I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. That's it. Yeah? Yep. No that's big it. projects in the forecast? Oh, I mean... I've got a lot of vinyl commissions. Like I've probably got a good eight commissions on the works right now. People being like, paint me this. Like I got a Batman logo. I've got like a Charmander. I got to paint. I've, I just finished painting a nightmare before Christmas scene. So it, that one was really cool. Actually. I had fun with that. Mm. So I, I got a bunch of vinyls to paint. Uh, tomorrow I'm actually heading over to Jasper and I'm going to be meeting up with uh, probably close to a dozen different TikTokers. And we're going to go cliff jumping. Oh, wow. Yeah, Horseshoe Lake. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of TikToks coming out of that. Put a dozen TikTokers together, cliff cliff jumping. There's going to be some shenanigans. Very cool. Yeah. I don't want to take up too much more of your time here. So before I go, please promote yourself. Pamp yourself. Let people know where they can find you all over social media. And don't forget about your podcast. Of course. Well, I'll start with my podcast. Sure. My podcast is called Insert Creative Title. Uh, I talk to creators, entrepreneurs, uh, artists all around the world, uh, like yourself, JD. Thank you. Uh, so you can find me on Spotify. Just look up Insert Creative Title. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's on about a dozen different platforms. Search it. Uh, you can look up official.ben.gibson on Instagram. You can look up official Ben Gibson on TikTok. And I don't have a URL yet, but I am on YouTube. I think it's just Ben Gibson on there somewhere. Might have to search a bit, but... Hmm. Is Geeknoid TV done? Geeknoid TV is technically still on YouTube, but it's done. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Well, thanks for your time, Ben. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Up next is Lauren and Ethan of Thousand Faces Cosplay. If there was a kind-hearted soul out there, a couple of kind-hearted souls out there, who were genuine, sweet, caring, trustworthy, honest, talented, stunning, and inspirational... 
I'm pretty sure they would look up to Ethan and Lauren. They are wonderful, incredible people. And they just recently found new life on a different platform. This is Ethan and Lauren of Thousand Faces Cosplay on the flip side. It's been over a year since we have had the opportunity to actually sit down and have a conversation. While we were standing and you guys were incredible stature than me at that time, because you guys are phenomenal when you show up. A lot has happened within the past year, and a lot of it has to do with quarantining and COVID-19. You guys have not skipped a beat at all, and have just basically, from what I can tell, exploded into social media. Your Instagram and your uh, social media following, as well as you've really grown like so fast on Twitch. What has it been like for you in the past let's say six months well i mean the i think that the experience that we have had is very similar to the experience that a lot of people have had dealing with all of this you know at the beginning of quarantine we had just moved to a new state we had just moved to colorado yeah. so there was an additional sense of isolation because we hadn't at that point had the opportunity to really set up mm -mm. a social network as we then got isolated at home. But after a little while of, you know, finding our own sanity and being able to continue working out and all of that, it became very clear that we weren't going to be able to see the people we were used to seeing mm -hmm. at conventions for at minimum happen. 2020, you know, possibly well into 2021. And so we had been asked several times throughout the years to start up a Twitch to consider streaming, but this was just the perfect opportunity for it, so that we could still, in a different but still great way, interact with people and see people, even if we're not Foster able... Foster meaningful relationships. Even you know? if we're not able to do it in the same capacity, it's been a wonderful connection mm -hmm. point to still be able to do that. I just want to jump right into uh, something, and I, I, I'll forgive you if your memory isn't exactly the greatest, but when you were here in Prince George, British Columbia, uh, we were at Northern FanCon 2019. It was so much fun. <laughs> oh, I want to come back to FanCon. It was so cool. I have, for being there for one weekend, I have some intensely strong memories. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I think that might be a conversation for off-camera, but... Um, oh, no, no, no. Okay. It was good, because, like, I was in the middle of contest prep. Right. Like, I had a contest, like, two weeks right. later, so I was getting up at five in the morning, going and hitting the one Gold's Gym that's there in Prince George. Yeah. And getting my workout in, then going to the convention, and it was ice cold in the convention center <laughs> as I was shirtless. Um, but everyone was so amazing. It was a great time. Uh, just just on a side note, I still have your banner. It's over there in storage over there. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, the shipping on it is like, Whoa! Yeah, like I don't even know how. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I looked into it. It's not yeah. cheap. It's not. No. <laughs> no. Get it, it, it might have to turn into a situation where if you want it, we're going to have to be on the American Canadian border and I just throw it across I'm, the border. You just I'm chuck it at us. <laughs> well worth, well worth it. But while, while you were here, I bought, um, I, like, happy to support uh, incredible creators, but I bought a specific poster off of your book. And it was most mostly of your backside, Ethan. What up? <laughs> <laughs> and is the Game of Thrones. Is it yes, the yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and uh, the signature on it was uh, something about uh, you promised me nine inches of snow. Inches of yeah, snow. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, will, I will never get tired of that signature on that picture. <laughs> I just can't help it. <laughs> The reason why I'm bringing it up is because uh, you guys are very adept at cosplay and very creative, and you en encompass and just take hold of the characters that you uh, portray. But also, you are more into modeling on a professional and hobby standpoint than cosplay, and a lot of your fitness has especially to do with it. The, Sorry, what was that? Especially... I was saying, especially over the last, like, six months, quarantining. Yeah. Because with no conventions, the cosplay motivation is hard. Yeah. But it's still possible to take modeling photos. Right. With the photographer six feet away. And... You know? 
Yeah. So, but we're doing a cosplay shoot here on Wednesday. We sure are. Um, so that will be the first time since quarantine. Yes! Um, but I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, that's fine. I love, I love the banter. The modeling has led into something that I, uh, quite frankly, was surprised and was happy, like pleasantly surprised. You create content on a, an adult, exotic, even erotic level. And by no means is it something that you would, how do I put this gently? Consider smut. You have created something that is beautiful and creative, artistic, and it shows, as the profile is named, 95% Lauren, <laughs> which is which is well done. Yes, exactly. I thought that was a hilarious name. <laughs> I loved it. Yes. I was like, I'll be in there one out of every 20 shots or so. So, yeah. you know. It just, you know what? Us men... We are best utilized as tools that we are. I in the modeling photography, Facts. like we say all the time that like my main role, like or the male's main role is honestly as an accessory piece right. to the woman in the. You're picture. basically furniture. <laughs> like that's why it's frequent that you won't even see the man's head, or he'll be looking away, right. so that the focus is still on the woman. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, we are like furniture. We're, we're meant to be put in place, held, held stiff, and mounted. It's just. Yeah, I'm, I'm freaking all about that. I need that on a button I'm right here. <laughs> so I I had no idea that you had an OnlyFans account when you were in Prince George last year. Is this because we, did, it, we didn't? Okay. So this leads into my next this question. Is, when did this happen, and how did this come to be? So this happened in December. Yep. So we haven't had it for very long, um, but. We're just, I mean, <clears throat> how do I best put this? I was taking the selfies anyway, <laughs> so why not share them? And, <laughs> and you had a Patreon. I did, yeah, we did. And it just became one of those things where Patreon was just starting to restrict what I could create. Mm. And I was wanting to pursue more modeling. And um, Patreon had this crazy redefinition of pornography. Yep. Oh, yeah. Where, like, literally, if the woman is shirtless and touching her own breast, it is considered right. pornography. Right. If the hand were away, it wouldn't be. So, one of the purposes of Patreon initially, and then modeling fans, or modeling fans, only fans later, was to provide a place where. Because Lauren does a lot of boudoir or nude photography, I do. there are a lot of photos a lot of that weird we can't show fully like on Instagram. Out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we were still utilizing Patreon instead of OnlyFans, there would still be photos that we couldn't share because they would violate that standard. Hundred percent. And right. additionally, like you can't put them on Instagram. Right. Um. So Ethan took up our Twitter a little bit and and got got jamming on that. I'm not really sure how completely and totally let's open an OnlyFans um, came about um, I know that we were transitioning jobs because we were just about to move we were worried about being able to you know have money coming in and we had this huge backlog mm -hmm. of content we've created um, that we couldn't share anywhere else so we're like hmm where do we dump this stuff and then OnlyFans happened and you know 300 people later what um, and it's being, and it's, and it, it, it is our primary source of income. And um, it couldn't have happened, you know, coincidentally at a better time. No, yeah. That, you know, now we're stuck inside and getting to a nine to five job is more and more difficult, more and more dangerous. The fact that we happen to create an online, completely from home revenue source. Just yeah. Two months before we got lucky, uh, we were quarantined. Not right. bad timing. Yeah, and additionally, the the OnlyFans thing because I, I'll admit I'm not um, like an overtly sexual person most of the time. I, I tend to be a closet freak, and I, I didn't really think that I would have the confidence to do something like this. Right. And I feel like I am blossoming in there. You know, I'm seeing myself in a different way. I'm owning my sexuality. I'm, you know, taking hold of, of myself and the way that I view myself. And, and it's incredibly empowering. So we've just continued it. And it's fostered um, my professional modeling career. 
Like I'm now represented by an agency and I've been published and I am able to create the concepts that I want to create and well in your to toot your horn for you. No, that don't do that. Be, that isn't because <laughs> of the, that those things happen. Well, it caused me to push because of the hard work you have put in the modeling and the concepts that you've built through <laughs> your hard work. <laughs> you guys are the portrait of love. You know that. Well, because just like you wow. were talking about, just like you said, uh, you were saying how like so much of the, though one might be able to call it erotic work, right. isn't smutty. Like she's done now a couple series with a modeling friend here mm -hmm. in Colorado where it's entirely nude, but also almost entirely devoid of sexuality. Completely. Um, which I think is such an amazing and beautiful thing. I think it's almost impossible to resist for many photographers if there's a nude female model to make it sexy mm -hmm. in some way. Right. Be because it's, I'm not going to say easy, but it's the biggest seller. Mm. You know, sex sells. And so to be willing to possibly get a few fewer interactions and likes in order to create something like, unexpected yeah. and sculpturesque with the human form something that of... sticks in your mind mm -hmm. like these concepts that I get to be a part of or that I, I, I've been able to facilitate of my own has been so wonderful it's like cosplay on this other level for me and I think thinking of it like cosplay has been important because for us as cosplayers as you know one of our favorite things is to perform Ooh, to, I love it. to be in the character yeah and being in the character makes doing certain things easier makes finding that mm -hmm. confidence easier mm -hmm. to behave that way so sometimes when lauren is going into modeling shoots and she's nervous like just imagine that character create that character who is doing this modeling it's more difficult because you don't have a source, you know. Right. You don't have the comic book, you don't have the cartoon. But taking those lessons of theater, of cosplay, and applying it to other dimensions has been very helpful. And then we've gotten to start combining modeling and cosplay. Yeah. By taking some of the photography styles that we've fallen in love with mm -hmm. in modeling. Yeah. Some of the photographers we've worked with through modeling, but putting characters in front of the lens the cocktail of, of our lives and it's like the bodyscape series has become one of my favorite things so the i love character it bodyscape I, and portrait series i and, love it so and much. ethan finally got in front of the camera for that yeah. <laughs> that's why, that's I, don't have, that's why I don't have a big beard right now he did Geralt. <laughs> Oh yeah, he did a girl bodyscape, and oh, I wa yeah. I walked downstairs and I saw him, and I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so excited. There's gonna be there's gonna be some girl booty. There so, be some girl booty. you know, bring it on, bring I, it I, on. I, I and what I love about the bodyscape series is part of the idea behind it is you don't need many items of the cosplay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so literally to do Geralt, I needed his necklace and this like ten dollar crappy wig. <laughs> with a hairline. Yeah. The hairline was the worst hairline I've ever seen. It was pretty bad, wig, dude. But the bottom half of the wig looked amazing. Dude, fire! So as fire. long as we just photographed that part of it, we were good. Yeah. <laughs> just just here down. <laughs> yeah, no, one hundred percent. Like all photos are from lip down. Beautiful. <laughs> That's, all your best features are from your lips down. That's one hundred percent. Anyone who's followed you guys on social media for an extended period of time uh, know that you guys are not only advocates, but huge supporters of the male cosplay genre, yes. which clearly does not get enough attention. Again, sex sells, and let's face facts here, the female body, nine times out of ten, is more attractive than the male body, even if that body Yoga. is belonging to Ethan, which you are a stunning creature ah. of insanity. <laughs> is that me? Oh, stop. <laughs> stop. I, I love it. Oh, stop. Please stop. <laughs> what is it that prompts you to show so much support and bring so much of a spotlight to the male cosplay industry? Okay. So... I can answer this. Oh, okay. Okay, go um, Ethan, ha Ethan has a big mouth. And when he sees injustice happening in the world, mm. um, whether it be not giving someone enough credit or actual bad things happening, he's got to be vocal about it. And, like, I just want to preface by saying that though I feel male cosplayers are underrepresented in the community, that doesn't mean I am forgetting all of the 
unique struggles that female cosplayers go through yeah. in cosplay, on social media, those things, they are separate issues. Yes. No, And neither is less important. And we're allowed to be upset about multiple things simultaneously. Yes. So just like I am upset that female cosplayers have to deal with sexual or, or sexism, have to deal with having their boobs commented on on every single photo, oh having my God. their breast size be a determining Ugh. factor of whether their cosplay was successful or not, being told that they're showing too much skin or not enough skin, the inability to win for female cosplayers. I am just as upset about that mm. as I am over the fact that a male cosplayer and a female cosplayer wearing the same caliber cosplay, it is about a you know five to one chance. Yeah that the female cosplayer will have a higher interaction. Right. And there's no one individual source of blame here, but I think that there are two generalized ones, and that is one, aggregate pages, and two, how we on social media choose to like, comment, and share. Mm -hmm. Because if we, as the viewers, as the consumers, see a female cosplayer and we're more likely to hit that like button or leave a comment, that encourages the aggregate pages to post more women. Right. And the cycle continues and continues and continues. Right. And there are, there is, again, nothing wrong with posting female cosplayers. Female cosplayers are amazing. But so are male cosplayers. Mm -hmm. And they deserve that love too. Just like, and this is not the only example you can pull out in the cosplay community where one segment is not getting appropriate attention. attention. That could be, you know, uh, bigger or plus size cosplayers, um, people of color who cosplay, dear God, all they have to go through online mm -hmm. just to wear a fucking cosplay. Yeah. What the hell? Like the, the comments I have seen on people of color cosplaying characters is nothing short of horrific. Yeah. So again, I don't want, our advocating for giving male cosplayers attention to be misconstrued as saying that that is the biggest problem in the community or the only problem in the community or they're the only group that is being neglected. No, it's just one of many groups that needs to have their voice amplified. Yeah, right. it's, it's different sections within the same category and they Absolutely. need to be addressed differently. Yes, And just because you choose to focus on one doesn't mean you think the others are unimportant. Just Absolutely. because my friend focuses more on the POC side of things doesn't mean she thinks males don't deserve representation. You know, it's kind of like just because you say save the whales doesn't mean you think the rest of the green life can go fuck themselves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just drawing attention to you're just drawing attention to one in particular. That's right. All. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> yeah. This. This is what needs attention. Don't. Don't ignore everything else. Just this needs attention. Right. There are. There are other right. problems too. But this is one. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> That's our main thing. Like we just want. It, just like your race, your size, your age should not be determining factors in whether or not you are able to succeed and get noticed as a cosplayer, mm. neither should your sex or gender yes. be one of its determining factors. Dress up, have fun, yeah. be yeah. accepted. That's 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 basically it. Right? You're celebrating uh, uh, you're celebrating someone's art, you're creating your own, you're expressing yourself. It shouldn't matter your sex, color, height, uh, fitness level, anything like that. If you are out there having a good time and expressing yourself, yeah. it should be welcomed. But unfortunately, we live in an age where the internet exists. And yeah. you know, it, it's possible talk to have a negative opinion on something, someone will. Yes. Man, the comments that we get on our YouTube page for some of the most innocuous things is just ridiculous. Really? Like video of Oh, yeah, a video of her as Harley Quinn hugging a little boy. Like, um, excuse me, Harley Quinn is a villain. <laughs> <laughs> have, have they not seen any of the most recent stuff about Harley Quinn at all? Come on. Come and on. how she, And like, how in the original comics, her and, her and Ivy rescued children all the time. Come on. And she visited Black Canary in the hospital yeah. after she gave birth. Like, there's... Let's be real, guys. Anyway. Um, but... And I also do want to point just one thing out, and... There are, I think, two methods one can take 
when one wants to see a particular type of cosplay get more attention, and mm. that is bash the type of cosplay that is getting the most attention, or just try to promote the type mm. you want to see get attention. I would advocate for the second option, not the first. You see this a lot with sexy cosplay. Right. You see people who get upset that sexy, predominantly female cosplay gets a lot of attention. And so their tool that they use to deal with that is to bash sexy cosplay. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, oh, I want to see more armored cosplay represented. So I'm going to go hunt down some armored cosplayers and like all of their things and comment on all of their things. No, I'm gonna That's I'm gonna a... comment on the thing that pops up in my feed already for reasons un, un uh, unbeknownst to the commenter, but um, because I it's think... the easiest thing to do, and it's just it's not conducive to what we're trying to do here, and that's amplify our fandoms and our creativity and our desire to be happy and have fun. It's if you want to see a change, less. if you want to see a change in the community, do it through positivity, not yep. through knocking other people down. Yep. Be the change you want to see. There is one more question I wanted to touch on, and you guys can elaborate to, to your heart's content. Yeah. Um, and that is the, again, we're going back to the growth and explosion that you guys have experienced on all different levels. You opened up an OnlyFans page, and suddenly you got uh, hundreds of people supporting you. And you've opened up Thank a you. Twitch account. And you got... Thank you. <laughs> you got all these people who are just jumping on board and being expressive and giving you ideas for emotes. Uh, what's that been like? Let's let's. You we already talked about OnlyFans. Let's talk about the fun, the gaming aspect of your life and your careers, and also the fact that you've started to incorporate working out. Which yeah. I thought I thought that would have been like the first thing you guys would hammer out. Hey, it was the second stream. The second stream was working out. The second stream. Yeah. So we uh we broadcast a gaming stream twice a week and a workout stream on Workout Wednesdays from our home garage. And honestly, just like everything else that we have been so fortunate to encounter within this community, I think all we can really feel is humbled yeah. and grateful. Because, you know, our like count on Instagram, it comes from you all. Our supporter count on OnlyFans, uh, it comes from you all. Our subscriber count on Twitch, it comes from you all. It's not... Like we can try to be self-made, and we can definitely do things that are self-made. <laughs> well, we've done surprisingly little. But when it it's comes to you. social media, like you can't do it without other people helping you. And so we just the fact that we were uh, affiliated on Twitch in literally the minimum possible amount of time is thanks to you all. And it, it's not something we did honestly. We were just being us. We're and just there. then it was you all who decided that that was worth watching and supporting and subscribing to. So I'll never understand, but I'm thankful. And that's what we always... Like, we, <laughs> we, we come back to the same thing that we say all the time at conventions when people come up to our table and they're like, oh my god, I'm, I'm a huge fan of you guys. It's like, no, I don't know why. No accounting for taste. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you have bad taste. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm grateful for your bad taste, but overall it's just very humbled and grateful that we're able to make anyone smile, that we're <laughs> able to make one person more motivated to pick up a weight, make one person more motivated to go on a jog the next day. You know, that is something I am endlessly grateful Absolutely. for. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. With the Twitch uh, and the gaming and the workouts, um, what do you hope to... Uh, what do you hope to achieve moving forward? Is it going to be like mastering another game or instructing uh, a different <laughs> workout? Or are we going to get uh, Ethan and Lauren in the kitchen? Like, what's it going to be? <laughs> I mean, my hope. Like, one thing I was even thinking Let's about. Let's make cookies. <laughs> <laughs> you just want any excuse to make cookies. Okay. <laughs> Um, like, I hope eventually when it's contest season to live stream some posing practice yeah. um, for bodybuilding cool. and things like that. But And I'll, pro I'll probably live stream your competition, too. Oh, Jesus. Um, I mean, honestly, I don't even know if we have a future huge goal right. with the streaming. We're just happy to have it as a mechanism of connection right. with people. 
and having other people connect with other people. We have, like, uh, we do have one like subscriber goal where we'll be able to start uh, cos or dressing up in cosplay before we stream a game, mm -hmm. like having Harley Quinn play Assault on Arkham. Oh shit! Or, We're gonna uh, fuck it up. The Arkham games or <laughs> being in Borderlands while playing Borderlands. Um, you know, getting to partner would obviously be amazing. Mm -hmm. We have a huge long time before we get right. There. We have a, we have uh, a satisfied everything but the seventy five viewer average. Yeah, seventy five viewer average. That's a tough one. To... Yeah, I'm trying to climb that ladder myself. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. you got this, buddy. Uh, <laughs> but just if we, you know, if we manage to connect to one new person, if we manage to make one person on one day not feel alone yeah. and isolated that day because they were able to watch us play Diablo. Yeah. We can motivate one person to try working out at home in their garage because they saw our workout stream. That's worth it. Mm. Doesn't, you know, it would be amazing if we got to partner. It'd be amazing if we hit all these goals, but I think our real goal is just you guys. Yeah, just connecting. Well, I think when it comes to social media and the finish lines that are put in front of everyone, uh, you guys are going to get there uh, very, very quickly, if not sooner than you expected. <laughs> well, it really comes down to the fact that when it comes to social media, it's all about who you are and also uh, what you portray. And you guys are genuinely incredible people. You're, you're kind souls. You're friendly. You're smart. You're hilarious. You are just the epitome of what love is I in the 20th century, 21st I need century. All of that is a ringtone. Yeah. <laughs> just my voice. Where's that voice coming from? <laughs> my alarm tone every morning. You are beautiful, smart. God. Is that you? Gosh, people like you. People like you. No, it's not God. It's just some guy from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are going to get there because because of who you are and also the energy and what you put out there because it is very much just like anything else in the world. You get in what you put out. You get You get the energy from the food you put in and you get the love that you put out into the world you get that back tenfold and you guys yeah, have always been incredible incredible icons and just incredible people and it seems as though anything you guys touch <laughs> so thank you for that well thank you for believing in us yeah. sincerely i know that we only you know got to meet you a little over a, or about a year ago yeah now, yeah a year and a couple months um, so your support and your belief in us and what we're doing means the world it to us. It genuinely does. I cannot friggin' wait to be able to get back to conventions and start raising money for some animal shelters yeah. again, because we've missed being able to do that, because yeah. we don't have the online print store mechanism set up and that with, so many people with do. With COVID, we couldn't even volunteer. And we were set to volunteer at some animal shelters, and then COVID. So sad. Um, but... Thank you sincerely yeah, for believing in us both, for liking our brand of for crazy. For whatever we're doing, <laughs> like, thank you. It, it means more to us than we can say, sincerely. On on the topic of support, Lauren, what's your next project? And Ethan, when's your next competition? Uh, that's a longer question. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so I just completed a conceptual project that, I, that I've been kind of working on in my brain for a while called The Glitter Slut. <laughs> Um, she was gonna have a name, but Glitter Slut just kind of stuck, and it was, um, for a couple of magazines that I really respect that I wanted to submit to. Um, so it's all holographic, and it was on location at a place called the Neon Room. Um, so, uh, bringing that to life was, was m one of my bigger projects, and I'm very excited that, um, I'm starting to see the results of those images, and I'm like, <laughs> it's exactly what I wanted! Oh my god! Um, <laughs> and then six days from now, we have the smoke bomb. We sure do. With Wasteland Alice, and which is Creed. SKS Props' is creation, mm -hmm. and then and then Creed. Yeah, we've never done um, any s smoke bomb shoots, so it's going to be very exciting, exciting to that. create some new cosplay content. Um, we need a picture of Alice and Creed together. Oh, I know they're not be... even close to the same universe. Can we, we can we make uh, Steve say that they're romance I'll romantically get linked? Right yeah. Um, but so that's kind of the the big project that I have going. Um, aside from my first paid gig as a represented model. Um, Congratulations. So, 
and it's going to be a gothic e-girl shoot. And I'm like, that's my brand. I'm all about it. So I'm feeling really good, feeling really hyped. It's going to be video focused. So just kind of feeling kind of, kind of feeling good on the creative front here. So As long as they stay six feet away and wear a mask, we're good. Well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. that's, that's written into the contract. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the writers. Stand over back, there. Back the truck up. <laughs> And, and uh, even, even your competition. Let's so talk about that. So competitions, the one I would have been doing actually was last weekend. But with... And you look in fire. You look in fire. Um, but with COVID and all the gyms shut down, and at first when the gyms all shut down, we didn't have a real garage gym set up. We had exercise bands. I didn't have any dumbbells here. I didn't have barbell. I didn't have squat rack. Right. And so, one, I didn't even know if the competition would still be going on when we were making this decision in April. You know, it was tough to tell if they would even still be holding the competition in August. So that, along with being unsure when I'd be able to access real gym equipment, I was like, I don't want to go through the process of prep if the contest won't even happen, if I won't be able to be the best condition and shape I could possibly be. So next year will be the next contest which is the plan my coach and I have had since about March. Okay. We're going through a cut right now almost as if I were going into a contest, not quite that extreme. Mm. We're going to do another bulking cycle, another one or two bulking cycles, and then next summer will be the next contest, hopefully. Here's hoping. I mean, I know it's difficult. Uh, I miss it. I miss <laughs> it. <laughs> no, don't, no doubt. I no doubt whatsoever. Really um, it's all about timing. You you have to set yourself up so that you are at the best physically, healthy wise, uh, and able to go up on stage within like a day or so, right? So yeah, yep. I, I get the frustration. See, I was just having a calculator. I was like, man, I don't have access to a gym. What if I'm going up against someone who had access to a gym throughout mm -hmm. the entirety of quarantine? You know, their friend owned it and let them in right. throughout the whole thing. Like, I'm at an inherent disadvantage, so yeah. I just wanted to wait. I would rather not get up on stage for a year than get up on stage and place lower than I know I should have. Right. I'd rather wait and do it right. Yeah. That's so, just the way so I So we're just throwing, throwing him in front of the camera to, Basically. to capture the, the, fo the form. <laughs> the work, the ethic. Yes, all of that yes. right there. Yes, exactly. exactly. Every day. Every he does day. a mean dedicate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta do it. Yes. Can't miss a day, man. Can't miss. No, I agree, one hundred percent. I know that pain. Um, where can people find you? Where should they uh, search you out on social media? We are Thousand Faces Cosplay on almost everything. Uh -huh. uh, Facebook, Thousand Faces Cosplay. Instagram, Thousand spelled out underscore faces underscore cosplay. Twitch, Thousand Faces Cosplay. Um, those are our main uh, social media sources. You 95% can also Lauren if you like the sexy, sexy stuff. Find <laughs> Lauren on Instagram. 95, 95% Lauren. That's her modeling page. And if you want my bodybuilding page, that's Ceratosaurus Flex. Uh, Alicia loved that name, by the way. She absolutely loves that name. Like, that's a muscle group. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that the best? I was so proud of that one. <laughs> Because my Serratus is one of my favorite muscle groups, and I was like, Serratosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks for but your yeah, time. And if you're looking for OnlyFans, uh, it's Lauren Modeling on OnlyFans. Gotcha. That'll bring her up. <laughs> Thank you.